Let me turn now to my colleague, uh, Congressman uh, Cohen from uh, Tennessee. Thank you, and I appreciate your remarks. I, I read along your speech a little earlier and read along as you, as you delivered it to us, Dr. Polk. I'm, I'm pleased the C-SPAN's here so the American public can hear your remarks. And I thought as we sat here, the crowd that was here for General Petraeus, it's understandable people have respect for the military and for a general. And I looked at you and I thought how, I really thought about the movie Little Big Man. And in that movie, the man said there are very few human beings, but there are lots of white people. And what he was talking about was the Indians as distinguished from the, 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 uh, the soldiers there. And uh, of course, uh, there was a lot of truth in that movie by Chief Dan George. Uh, you give us much wisdom and much to think about. There are Keith Oberman out there who sees what's going on and we get some good reportage. As far as my colleagues, it is somewhat disappointing that they're not more here. I understand the other uh, needs that they have to visit with constituents, to be at committees. And unfortunately, and one of the big problems in Congress is, is the urgent need to raise money. Uh, as a freshman, and, and, and Representative Ellison is here. We are kind of soulmates, although we're somewhat uh, from Minnesota and Tennessee and other reasons. Uh, some would think different, but we have a lot, so much in common. But one of the things you learn here immediately is people raise money constantly to get reelected, and that's one of the problems here. And people, rather than deal with the issues, oftentimes have to deal with the realities of getting reelected, and that oftentimes means major money because if you don't have it, the opponent's going to have it, and so people go. So there are different things people do. I think the polls show about a fifth of the people want us to get out, redeploy, or just leave a, uh, Iraq. About a fifth want us to stay the course, and then, then there's the middle three-fifths that want us to be there, but uh, only in terms of guarding uh, the, the American properties, the green zone, the embassy, whatever. Uh, train the troops, which uh, uh, seems almost like a futile effort, and then search out al-Qaeda, uh, which is about 10 percent of the insurgency. So that's one of the problems we have in getting together a majority. Much of the criticism I've heard today, and maybe it's deserved, is of the Democrats. I'm a, a, a proud to be a Democrat, but regardless of, of the Democrats that aren't with us, we don't have the Republicans in the Senate, as you well know, to get anything done, and you need 60 votes in the Senate. And it is the Senate that's the, the major problem. Uh, I think our Speaker has been a leader in getting out of Iraq and would like to do it. And if there was hope for more success in the Senate, maybe there'd be more forceful leadership there. But there are some good things happening, mostly because of the leadership of this out of Iraq and Progressive Caucus. Uh, and people like Representative Ellison and, and my other fellow freshmen who's here, Representative Clark and Representative Johnson, because we've kind of been on the front lines. You know, I, last thing I want to say before I'd like to yield to who, Representative Ellison or whoever is the thing I was fortunate to be with President Clinton on Saturday night. And President Clinton always said about people that talked about we shouldn't stop and, uh, <coughs> stop and run. Or, you know, he said you ought to uh, split and run. What is what's the term? Cut and run. Cut and run. Yeah, I even, for, I even forgot that. Thank, thank God. But rather than cut and run, is stop and think. Mm -hmm. And what you've given us is an opportunity to stop and think, and that's what the American public needs to do. Thank you. Thank you, sir. No.